there, friends. Welcome back to Second Star to the Left. I'm Michelle, and this is my daughter, Billy. Hi. And here's where we'll share board game reviews, ramblings, and a few wrong turns along the scenic route. We do something a little bit fun today and we, we did we did today's gonna be a fun oh, i thought today all, was gonna be one of the boring ones all of the videos are fun but we recently watched a video from the crew over at table knots uh who we love and if you haven't checked them out please go check them out i'll put all the information down below hi table knots hi table knots but they uh they were looking to replace their board games for what I believe they, it was like $100 plus inflation or $125 plus inflation. They all made a list and then they compared lists. We're going to make one list. And since it's just one and we have to share our choices, we're going to splurge a little and go $150. Mm. Now, to be really clear, this isn't like the top 10 board games I would start a collection with. Haven't we done this video? Yeah, we did a long time ago when we were like, zombies ate our board games. And it was like, <gasps> I remember it was that. really far back and, you know, nobody watched it. So we're going to do it fun. again. <laughs> I wonder what our, I wonder if we compare our lists. Oh, I doubt there's like any of the same games on there. That'd be fun. We should check. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it down below. This is a well-planned video. <laughs> but again, this isn't going to be our, like our top 10 games you should start a collection with or, you know, top 10 essential board games. This is going to be... The games we would get to restart our collection if all we had was $150. And that means some of the like big heavy hitters are going to be right out because I'm not going to waste half of my budget on a big game that's not going to get played as much or, you know, as like a smaller card game or a light game. Let's see what we pick. It's not New York Zoo. <laughs> Yeah. Why isn't it New York Zoo? Spoilers. Um, I don't know. I think that I just thought it would cost more, so I didn't put it in. I didn't, Did you even look up the price? I really didn't. I had for an shame. idea in my head of like different genres that I wanted to hit for $150, mm -hmm. and so I just... And none of them were your favorite game? <laughs> no, oddly it wasn't. Nice, nice. The first one that I chose is one that everybody in the house likes. Everybody. Everybody. Even Navi. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't have thumbs. Um, and that is fit to print. So I wanted a kind of spatial, puzzly game because those are some of our favorites. Mm -hmm. And this is the only game that we play that has real-time portions that Billy enjoys. Usually real-time games are a bit too frantic and chaotic. Yes. And make Billy a little bit crazy. So, uh, but Fit to Print is this lovely game from Flat Out Games that you are woodland creatures that have a newspaper of your very own. And so each of you have a newspaper. You're collecting and sorting articles to put in your paper. Now, the trick to this is that those articles are face down in a pile and you have a certain amount of time to pick them up, look at them, and decide either to put them on the table and there's a really cute little 3D mm -hmm. table for you to use in the game to be used later or to return them. And you'll do this until you think you have the perfect amount. So you're going to want a balance of happy and sad stories. Mm -hmm. You're going to want similar stories to not touch. You're going to want to have enough advertisements that you're not the last person, like the least advertisements, because otherwise you'll mm -hmm. lose points. Um, and you're going to want to fill up all of the spaces on the grid for your newspaper layout. I don't do well <laughs> at guessing how many stories and pictures and ads that I need. My paper is always a bit of a hodgepodge, but I love this game. It's really good. And there's three sizes of grid. So you have your Friday paper, your Saturday paper, and then your like big Sunday paper. So you can have those rounds to build up your paper and maybe get better at it. Hmm. Um, but it's, in theory. In theory. But it's adorable. Um, I think it's fun also because you just can't really predict the scoring until, you know, somebody... Well, maybe you can't. Call... Okay, I can't predict what my scoring is I mean, I can't either, be. but I thought that would be fun to say. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's a wonderful little puzzle and a little bit of a race to get the best newspaper possible. And also cute, adorable, you know, tool woodland creatures. Mm -hmm. Okay. The art is adorable. So... With all the little events. This game is the most expensive game on our list. Mm-hmm. 
at $32. Oh, so how many games are on this list? Total? I met, I managed to get nine games on nice. the list. Nice. But I had to compromise because, you know, you wanted a few choices. Uh-huh. I shared. I'm a good sharer. Are you, though? No. The second game on the list comes in at a mere eleven ninety nine. Hmm. And that is Sea Salt and Paper, uh-huh. which is the card game we have been pulling out the most. It's the game that I show to people the most, other than other than Nana. Oh, I should have looked up. But I don't want Trio, so. Wait. I feel like original Nana would be very expensive at this point. Yeah, it's harder to find. Because it's not in print, is it? It, it is, but not here, so it would be harder to find. And then it, you'd have to factor in, like, weird international shipping. So oh, we kind of yeah. stuck to the basics. So we picked Sea Salt and Paper. Sea Salt and Paper is a simple, beautiful set collection game that has this kind of bluffing aspect to it. So you can, you're trying to get to um, seven or more points. You can stop when you think you have that many points and then just see what everybody has and everybody scores their points. You can kind of bet and give everybody one last chance. And then if you have more points, you score them and they don't. But if you don't have the most points, you're not going to score yours. So there's a little little danger. Most likely, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get to a certain amount of points and I'm going to stop. But I'm also very likely to not stop and just hoard points in my hand so that the person who feels really confident and says stop doesn't get the most points. It's a case of knowing who you're playing with. The cards have this adorable, like, origami seaside art. I don't like fish, but these fish I like. These fish. <laughs> the- these fish These I like. Fish. Uh, we also have the extra salt expansion, which I didn't include in here because, you know, we're it's trying to keep the price. Of salt. <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep the price down. But for eleven ninety nine, that is a lot of plays for mm-hmm. that much money. Our next game cost us twenty one ninety nine, mm-hmm. but there was no way that I wasn't going to put a rolling right on uh-huh. this list. And more specifically, that I wasn't going to put one of those kind of crunchy rolling rights that I love on this list. So I chose French Quarter because of all of the series from um, Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, the kind of crunchy roll and write series, the Fleet, the Dice Game, and Three Sisters, and Motor City, and now French Quarter. French Quarter is the one that Billy will also play. Mm-hmm. So it reminds me of Disney. It does. So we usually stay at Port Orleans French Quarter when we go to Disney. So while this oddly doesn't actually remind us of New Orleans, mm-hmm. it does remind us of that, which in turn should remind people of New Orleans. But in this one, not only do you have that wonderful page of like combo after combo after combo, you also have this little map where you're running um, a parade, a second line parade through the streets and making sure that you're scoring enough points by visiting the shops and the businesses that are in the streets. It's bright and it's colorful and I love this one. It might be my favorite of the four. I think it's my favorite. There's four now? I thought there were three. Nope, there's Fleet, Three Sisters, Motor City, and French Quarter. I forgot Motor City was one of them. Yeah, so... that was its own thing. Basically, I'm going to tell you that whichever one I played most recently becomes my favorite because I love all of them. But French Quarter is the one I chose because I thought it would be, like, just the sweet spot of the one that I love and the one that Billy would love as well. Mm -hmm. The second most expensive game on this list comes in at $24.99, but there was no way we were going to keep this one off the list, and that is Boop. Yay! Which Boop? Original Boop. Uh The themed ones are a little bit more still, so... Oh, they are? Yeah, I think. This is probably the game that Billy and I play the most when we don't have any spoons, Mm -hmm. which is probably bad, because you should have spoons to play this game. (laughs) Even on low spoons, I feel like I'm pretty good against you... Also, when I was making this list, I did not factor in which of these we could play on BGA because Billy doesn't often play board games on BGA with me. So this was just a list of the games we would replace in our collection. I will, however, play Boop with anyone who wants to play on BGA. So that's fine, too. But Boop is this charming and extremely simple to learn game of kittens and cats kind of booping each other off of a quilt on a bed. You're trying to get three cats in a row. And to do this, first you have to get three kittens in a row to convert them to cats. And then put make sure you get three cats in a row. It feels like connect three. <laughs> Every time you place a kitten next to another kitten, they boop over a space. And if you place a cat next to another cat, boop over a space. There's 
basically like four rules to this game. And yet it is a very thinky, very fun, strategic game to play. And the cats are adorable. Mm -hmm. Next up is a game where we went with the pocket edition, which is actually the edition we have. So that's fair. And it's $16.99 for the pocket edition of Trailblazers. Trailblazers is a tile placement, kind of card placement game where you have three camps that you're setting up throughout the game. I think it's a biking, a kayaking, and a hiking trail. And so those trails are different colors and you're trying to make loops with the cards that you get that have, to, you know, it's like a pipe connecting game, but they're hiking trails. Mm -hmm. I love this game. I play it on BGA as much as possible, even though I lose a lot, but I still love the puzzle of this game and that it comes in a tiny little clamshell. This would be my choice and is my choice for the version that we have. So Trailblazers, I can play by myself. I can play with Billy. I could play with, I think, four people. So it's a good choice for if I want to play it solo or with other people. It scratches that really puzzly itch of trying to <laughs> make uh, paths or connections or trails in some game's pipes. But it isn't as easy as it seems. But it's really beautiful and it's really fun and you can play to any player count. Now the next two you had to have seen coming or at least knew where they were going to come from. Because mm -hmm. if I can drive down to the button shy store i can get the games for ten dollars and how am i not going to put button shy games on this list if i can get them for ten dollars mm -hmm. it was very very difficult to choose which two i would put on the list and in a little while we'll tell you the one that might have made the list but got traded there were, yeah, out there were three and they just kept swapping out in the end what i went with was I can play both of these solo or I can play both of these multiplayer. And the ones that I chose were Skulls of Sedlek and Natureopolis. Mm -hmm. Now Skulls of Sedlek, and I've talked about this one, we made a video about this one, is one of my favorites and one of the ones I gift the most often. You're stacking skulls like you would in a ossuary. ossuary. And you're trying to put them in an order that will please everyone. So the bone room, the bone room. So we only, you know, peasants don't really care. They're a point of peace. You put them wherever. <laughs> but like the royals want to be above other royals and above the peasants. So you're going to score more for whoever they're above. Criminals are next to the priests so they can confess. So if you have them paired up, then you get money. The romantics like to spend their afterlife together. Although there is an expansion with poets where you get points if they're if they're apart. If because a poet is next to a romantic that no, doesn't have another romantic? You ju it's just if the romantics are apart, kind of. Mm. I'll have to check on the exact, but I do like that there is some like unrequited love for that <laughs> one. There are a lot of expansions, and again, I did not include expansions in this, which is a little tricky when I say I could play it solo, because um, you need the expansion to play it solo, but I could look the rules up. Let's go with that. Sure, sure. So I feel like you're cheating I'm a little bit. I'm not cheating. I, well, maybe a smitch. Yeah. So the first one was Skulls of Sedlek, and the second one was Natureopolis, which is an amazing tile laying game where you're given three conditions, and you're trying to meet those by laying out these cards and connecting groups of meadows and forests and making sure the stream is connected and trying to keep the roads out of the area this one definitely can be played solo because i play it solo all the time and it can also be played with others i wouldn't suggest playing it with more than two people <laughs> but i think it says you can play with more than that it is my favorite of the opolis for now because for now. there are more coming mm -hmm. So I picked those two. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think mostly because I would get the most flex out of those two. And they are some of my favorites. There aren't a lot of bunch either. There aren't some of my favorites. <laughs> but those two I think I'll get the most play out of. So for $10 each, if I drive down to the store, that's a good deal. For $20, we picked another little box that is, you know, we really like the like puzzly card laying games, I think. When we put this list together, I realized exactly how much those are the ones that I want in the collection. But this one is $20 and it's Village Rails, mm -hmm. which I've often referred to as the like give up on your dreams game. It's a game of, uh, was it locomotives and local Lo motives? Exactly. It is, it is a really great compact little game where Before you are... when you thought I came up with that? It yeah, was just you right on the box. You were clever. holding the box. It was on the box. Oh, read the box. You're making a grid and trying to complete the railways in a way that's going to score you the most points. 
However, as you're setting up what those conditions are, it's going to be impossible to meet all of them or nearly impossible to meet all of the conditions. So at some point during the game, you're going to have to choose which one is most beneficial to you and which one you think you have the greatest chance of getting. <laughs> now, there is some ability to look ahead because there's a market so you can see what cards are most expensive and then will become cheaper as the rounds move forward so you can plan a little bit ahead but that doesn't mean that you always know what that next card being brought out is and it also doesn't mean that you don't know that the person sitting next to you might not snag the card away from you <laughs> village rails was kind of a surprise to us i had played village green which was a game about building out a village green and they came from the same company and i thought oh this will be kind of similar but with trains they aren't really that similar and i love village rails village green is good village rails is amazing it is it really is and everyone i've shown it to has bought a copy mm -hmm. so um so that was our last kind of larger purchase and then billy while she would have filled this entire list mm -hmm. a little bit differently even though we possibly i had to be i had to be reined back a little bit smidge billy chose our last one and it was only two dollars because we're getting really tight on budget here <laughs> And Billy you said, you have $2 left. And I said, I have a zine for that. Billy wanted an RPG very badly. <laughs> and I didn't want to spend the money on like a big fancy one because she's going to have to convince me to play them more likely <laughs> than not. So Billy chose Maze Rats, which is a game. Uh, it's created by uh, Ben Milton, who runs the Questing Beast YouTube channel here on the YouTubes. On the YouTubes. On the YouTubes. He also made Nave and the upcoming Nave Second Edition, which uh, we backed on Kickstarter. Very excited about. We, we did. <laughs> uh, it, it's 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 a uh, an OSR RPG, which means uh, old school rules or old school Renaissance. It means it's compatible with games based on the earliest editions of D and D. Uh, with retro clones of the old systems and uh, it means that if you if you get maze rat it can run with like a lot of pre-written adventures from a whole bunch of other things okay it, it has a lot of options and it's also a very familiar rule set to you uh it's it's pretty it's i would say maze maze rats itself is pretty streamlined and easy to learn okay because that's the that's the question i have for you like for us two dollars you can run it so we're good to go mm -hmm. But for other people, is that somewhere that they should start? It depends what you want to do, uh, what you want to get into. If you're looking to get into OSR type RPGs, it is a great place to start. That and Nave. But Nave costs more than two dollars. Actually, the first edition of Nave is, uh, I believe, pay what you want. But you should probably give them more than two dollars. Probably yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> pay what you want doesn't mean free. No. <laughs> so our grand total was one forty nine ninety six, and I couldn't find a game for four cents. So. <laughs> 149.96 which i think is pretty good the, the last game is juggling four pennies the way we could probably play that like little football game where you oh flip, yeah where you flip you the coins, coins between each other four cents the way that we got to 149.96 was by kind of trading out some games that we would have put in uh-huh three of those games that were on this list but then got bumped for something else include just one just one is kind of the default party game i bring out when i'm trying to gauge the group that I'm playing with. It's also a game that I bring out when people who have played it ask to play it over and over again. Hmm. <laughs> but it, it's an easy one to bring out when you're not quite sure. It's a very good like party game. Yeah, yeah, it's a good intro party game and it's a lot of fun. So Just One got bumped off the list because it cost $20, which <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, there were a lot of games that cost $20 or more, but we chose them over this one. Mm -hmm. The other game that didn't get in that I still feel a little bad about is Cat in a Box. I really wanted to put a trick-taking game in here. I love Cat in a Box. Oh, yeah. We didn't put a trick-taking game in, did uh, we? No, we didn't. Oh, no. I really wanted to put a trick-taking game in here. That one cost nineteen ninety nine, And again, that $20 mark isn't impossible. There were other games on the list. But when I looked at what we were choosing for $20, I had to make that choice. Cat in a Box is an amazing trick-taking game where the cards don't have suits until you assign them to them. Not only are you trying to 
take tricks and manage your hand, but there's also a spatial element where you're putting pieces down onto the board in front of you, depending on the cards that you play. And I really like this game. It is a harder game to teach people, if especially if they haven't played a trick-taking game, because now you have to teach them a trick-taking game, but also this variation on one. Mm -hmm. If you're playing with people who love trick-taking games or who are willing to like mm -hmm. go through the rules with you, it is a great game. Mm -hmm. It's also not optimal at two players it's yeah. better with a little bit more it can be played at two players and it's still fun but it, i like it a little bit better if we add someone else in and since we're almost always two players here it didn't make the list mm -hmm. the last one which kind of broke our heart and we, we bit, really yeah. kind of agonized was another button shy game because of course it was because of course it was and that was revolver noir which is a two player in hand hidden movement game that is spectacular it's amazing that they can do it in 18 cards i still i'm not sure exactly it's how so they pull it too. off but it's a really great game the reason that it didn't make the list is that it's that flexibility of player count right it has to be two players it, so skulls of sedlek and naturopolis both have that variability of player count and skulls is two player only and while it is an exceptional game if we're only going to have these games for 150 dollars then I needed to go with things that would get more play. Mm -hmm. More options. Are these the games you thought would be on our list? Were there any surprises? Are there anything... Where's Botnik? Where's Plan Where's, <laughs> where's <laughs> New York Zoo? I know. I was trying to mix it up a little bit, yeah, too. And I was yeah, trying to get yeah. different types of games. And, you know, it it's just a fun challenge. If you want to do it... Go jump into our Discord and, you know, tell me what your games for $150 would be. Mm -hmm. What kind of list would you make? <laughs> I'm sure that it's much different from ours and everybody's going to have their own set of very unique reasons for what they put <laughs> on their $150 game. And again, these are not the top 10 games we would start a collection with. And maybe we should make that list. Um, I'm not sure. We, maybe? Maybe. Maybe we'll think about making that list. But these are just the ones we would have if all of our games disappeared for some very strange reason and we mm -hmm. had to start over with $150. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see. Or if you'd like to keep watching until we get one right. Then please like, subscribe, and share. As always, open tables, open minds, and play yourselves. Bye. All right, so... The first one that I chose, I'm going to do this again while I'm not looking down. The first one you, that... You keep doing it while you're looking down. No, I gotta break done, this open. Here wait till go. you're done looking down. Mm -hmm. Got an itch. I had an actual Was itch. that a puzzle itch? It wasn't a puzzle itch. Oh.